Greetings, you mighty champion. Do you want to know who God has made you to be now that you're a Christian, now that you're in Christ Jesus? There's a lot of power in that. Keep listening. I'm Pastor Glenn Curry. I'm going to be sharing with you godly principles and revelation knowledge so that you get that aha moment. Whoa, you mean Jesus did that for me? I'm not just a forgiven sinner. I'm now legitimately, legally in the courtroom of heaven, a child of God. Wow, Pastor Glenn, tell me more. That's what I want to hear. <laughs> Jesus said, and I'm telling you this in every message, this is like number message number eight. I don't know how many messages I'm going to do, but it's essential that you get the aha moment that the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead lives in you and that Jesus came, John 10, 10, so that you can have life and have life more abundantly. And the word that Jesus literally used was zoe, that's what it's called, Z-O-E in the Greek. And it literally means the God kind of life in you. The life that God has in him, when you receive Jesus as Lord, came in you. Your old nature was gone. Remember, the, there's a lot of verses that say, I'm dead in Christ, but I'm risen with Christ and made alive in Christ. Actually, it was a process. The Bible tells us that we identify with Jesus, okay? Uh, we were crucified with Christ. We died with Christ. Uh, we were buried with Christ. Uh, we suffered with Christ. We conquered the devil with Christ. We rose up from the dead with Christ. We were born again. We're now seated with Christ. We rule with Christ. So the Bible tells us a lot of stuff. Jesus identified with us in our weakness and sin, but now we got to identify with him in his greatness, in his integrity, in his righteousness, in his holiness, in his power, because we're, he identified with us so we could identify with him. And one way we identify with him, he said, I came so that you can have the God kind of life in you. Yowza. I think we've been pushing that down. A lot of people don't even know that that exists, okay? So, we've got to progress in God. God, God is interested in your growth, in your progress, in your development. Life is university for eternity. The school's always in. Class is always in. So every day you got to, you hear that word, got to, learn something new about God that's going to amaze you and help you and strengthen you and cause you to grow spiritually, praise God. The Bible says faith comes, faith grows, faith increases, however you want to say comes, by hearing the Word of God. Not by going through crappy things, but by hearing the Word of God. So hear the Word of God. And a lot of times you can avoid crappy things by using your authority in the Word of God against the problem. Some things we just got to go through. Be tough, knowing that God is with us, God is for us, God is our defense, right? And so cultivate a close fellowship with God. That's what he wants. There's no limit to where we can go, what we can do, what we can have when we are hooked up by divine birth to the God of this universe and know it. You understand that Jesus was made sin with our sin. Sinfulness, I guess I could say. He became our substitute. He died because sin required death. God told Adam that the day you eat thereof of the forbidden fruit, you'll surely die, right? And we know in the New Testament, the wages of sin is death. So the wages that sin pays is death. So Jesus had to come and pay the wages of sin for us. Otherwise, when we die, we would have to pay the wages. We would have to go to hell. But we avoid hell now because we're in Christ Jesus. We died with him. We were buried with him. We were judged with him. We went to that awful place down below with where we should have gone, but he suffered in our place there so that we can go up into heaven. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. He suffered until the claims of justice against us were fully satisfied. And then God the Father said, loose him and let him go. That was three days later and he rose from the dead, praise God. Jesus arose from the dead uh, and we arose with him. We conquered with him. We rule with him. And you've got to take that mindset. Other, otherwise, life and the devil is going to steamroller you and make a pancake out of you. We've got to steamroller the devil, and we've got to do it with our faith and with the mighty word of God. Jesus identified with us. 
and was made sin with our sinfulness. He was punished for us. Even after he died on the cross, uh, Acts chapter 2, Peter said he went to hell and suffered there. Wow. Colossians 2.15 says he spoiled principalities and powers when he was made alive in the bowels of the earth before he was reunited with his body and went up into heaven and sprinkled his blood out there, up there, why, and sat down on the throne of God and God the Father turned to him and said, your throne, O God, is forever and ever. That's who we're hooked up with. Jesus blotted out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us the book of Colossians 2.14 says, he nailed it to his cross. The devil sent out paparazzi kind of demons to follow you around, to pursue you, to make a list of all the sins and all the crap and all the iniquities you got involved in. And the devil had a huge list to accuse you before God. Jesus snatched that out of the devil's hand, nailed it to his cross with him, took the consequences of all those negative things that you and I and mankind was involved in and blotted out forever by his blood all that stuff that was against us. The Bible says, Isaiah 54, 14, in righteousness shall you be established. That doesn't mean do, helping a grandma across the street or helping somebody load their groceries into their car because they look old and infirmed and weak and stuff like that. We should do good acts, good deeds. But righteousness means right standing with God. God himself has become your righteousness. For Isaiah 54, 14 says, uh, you shall be established in righteousness. And between Isaiah 54 and 52 and 4, it says, their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. Okay? That God, in the New Testament, Romans 3, 26, says that God himself might be righteous, which he is, and be the righteousness of him who has faith in Jesus Christ. God is your righteousness. Well, you're no good. You're a loser. You'll never amount to anything. Look at the stupid mistakes you, you made. You told God you'd never do that again, and now here you do it again. The accuser of the brethren, that devil, has little demons assigned to you to remind you of how screwed up you've been. Maybe still are. But God sent his word and sent me to tell you that your righteous, God himself has become your righteousness. So when you start thinking about the past and your failures and your sins and your disappointments and how somebody did you wrong, say, wait a minute, devil, in the name of Jesus, I have right standing with God and God himself is my righteousness. You take that up with God and God's gonna smack you one if you even say a word against me. You gotta say something like that against the devil. Don't let him talk to your mind all day. It's a lot easier to take an oak tree out of your backyard when it's a little twig sticking out of the ground than when it's a giant 20-ton oak tree. So when you find yourself feeling sorry, depressed, bummed out, woe is me, you fight that with the Word of God. God is with me. God is for me. God is my defense. I can't go under for going over. God's making a way for me in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. No weapon formed against me can prosper in Jesus' name. God is my righteousness. Say stuff like that. Train yourself. Get my scripture cards and find the verses that tell you who you are in Christ. Praise God. See yourself using the authority that's invested in the mighty name of Jesus. We don't just tag the name of Jesus on at the end of your prayer. Father, now I ask this in, in Jesus' name, amen. Okay, I did my part. I ask in Jesus' name, ha, ha, ha. No, find out what Jesus did before he even took on flesh in the Old Testament. He, he did a lot of work in the Old Testament. Find out what he did in his earth walk. Find out what he's doing today. That will build your faith so that when you use the name of Jesus, bam! You're going to sock the devil. He's going to, his knees are going to buckle. He can't stand the word of God. When the devil came against Jesus, when he was tempting him during that fast, 40 day fast, Jesus didn't, the devil tempted him to, I know you're hungry. You've been fasting 40 days. Turn this rock, if you're the son of God, turn this rock into a bread. Uh, Jesus didn't say, oh devil, uh, don't leave me alone. Uh, I'm here to do the will of God. He didn't say nothing like that. He, and he didn't say, devil, don't you remember you used to work for me? I kicked you out of heaven. He didn't say that. He said, it is written. 
If Jesus had to say it is written and quote the word, you got to find verses that promise you what you have need of. If you're sick, find the healing scriptures. If you're broke, find the prosperity scriptures that, are, that give you ammunition to fight the devil. Gee, wow, I'm almost out of time. The Bible says in Daniel 11, 32, the people that do know their God shall be strong and do exploits. That's you. Jesus said, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven, Matthew 5, uh, 16. God wants to bring forth good works, blessings, increase, healing, prosperity, righteousness, restored marriages in your life and through your life. I'm Pastor Glenn Curry. Listen, keep listening to this series on Zoe, the life of God in you. Keep feeding your faith. Keep starving your doubts. The doubts will die if you fill yourself up with the promises of God. That's why these scripture cards are so, so, so important. They'll help build your faith and force out that bad self-image, force out that discouragement, force out that, that those thoughts of the past. Forget that stuff. You're a new creature. This is a new day. God has turned a, a new chapter in your life. A new day has dawned for you, however you want to say it. Please follow uh, this, this podcast and subscribe before, uh, below I mean, and have a great, great day in Jesus' name.